Thanks for watching our video. We are at the Piano Solutions Workshop. Today I talk about hammerline or striking point in a high treble section. It's a very important property. If you ever uh, research uh, what's happened uh, with the striking point, you know for sure it's uh, very sensitive and it's improved the sound dramatically. Of course, there are the certain dimensions that manufacturer create for the certain pianos. Mostly on the Stanway pianos, it's a five and one eight inch. Uh, that's the dimension that Stanway keep through the century. And we follow them, but because it's a handmade piano and the position of the bridge and notches might be slightly different, that's why we need to adjust the hammer line. In order to do this, we need a certain procedure, we need a certain tool, and that's what I want to talk today and show you what you need to do it. For instance, yeah, we have uh, in the front of us, we have the Stanway Model A. Uh, it uh, doesn't matter what kind of Stanway, they got the certain uh, hammerline dimension. Anyway, uh, the first uh, before you start to do this hammerline, you have to fit the strings, uh, put them in, uh, to the hammer heads, put them in the proper position. You need uh, already tune the piano as good as possible. And then you uh, start to work uh, with the hammerline. The first of all, as we remember already, it been set on a certain dimensions. And generally, the sound already okay, uh, you have to be uh, sure that everything works uh, with the, already with the side blocks and the front sleeve. You just uh, be sure that your high treble section on a proper position. How you do it? You can uh, adjust your uh, uh, bracket on the side block uh, by moving the keyboard inside and out. Uh, in our case, we adjust on the best position for the really high notes, like four or five unisons. We already adjust it. But we just like now target this section, a lower uh, treble section. How are we gonna do it? Since we already set on the high level. Now we have to find how much inside or outside we need to achieve the best sound. What it means the best sound? Uh, the best sound uh, uh, between the piano technicians, it means that it's get to the some kind of uh, increasing the power, make the sound rounded, decrease the noise on the sound. That's how it is uh, working on the oral piano tuners. Uh, of course, uh, nowadays with the modern technology, we might create some software that identify this position, but it's still gonna be done the way to move it in and out. It means it's still just a lot of handwork. Anyway, uh, before I wanna prep uh, my uh, action, what I need, I'm gonna put a paper underneath and make the line in a position with the side blocks. And then we start to find this uh, proper sound on uh, lower uh, treble sections. Uh, let's uh, me to do it first and then we proceed. We take the action and place it on the table for now. And once we uh, took the action out, we got access to the key bed, and that's how we put the paper. You see, we wrap it around the front, and you have to be sure that it's not fold, it's not moved, just tape it. Yeah, that's what we did. Now, slide it inside and put two side blocks. That's how it was, how we like it. 
beside this, uh, we adjust already with our sustenuta pedal. It's very critical too. Uh, you need a very uh, accurate uh, dimension. Anyway, now we get it back to the, our desired position. And uh, uh, what we do, we're gonna put a line here. Put the line like, let's say, that's the position we want it to be. And then by moving the action in and out, we try to find the proper position for our sound. And let's do it. Yeah, we did the line. Put a line like this for this whole treble section. We know already that our high treble in a proper position, and uh, let's experiment now with the sound. For instance, let's select some. For instance, we take uh, the C. We can notice it's a little bit noise on this note. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I take this block out and I see what's gonna happen with the sound when I start to move the action in and out. I put my side block aside and let's see. We select note C. Let's say I move it forward. It doesn't help. It is increase the noise. Oh, now you see? It increased the noise. And now it's increased the power and the clarity. Let's see, we put a line again in this on a new position. Right in the front of note C, we can even separate them like this, making for each, each key. Because later on, when we work with the shanks, with the hammerheads, let's say we put it like this. It's going to be C. And we put a line here. And as you see, that's, that's the distance. You see, it's a deviation. That's gonna be probably a little bit more than 116. That's generally, we're gonna work on each key. And I wanna, of course, it takes uh, probably whole day to work on this one, but improvement gonna be dramatic. Uh, since uh, you realize already the way how we do it, uh, each key on the piano that tune, on the piano that been already kind of voiced, let's say pre-voiced pretty good, uh, you can identify this important. Let's say uh, we talked in the proper position of the hammerheads, right? Now, what we're we gonna do next? How we gonna deal with these uh, hammerheads, how are we gonna put them on the right position? That's a little problem. And we show you what tools you need to put it on the proper position. We show you right away. Of course, we're gonna take one key, it's C. In order for us to proceed, we have to pull the action again out. We are disconnect the side blocks, of course. And we take action, place it on the table. Yeah, I'd like to show you what kind of tool you need to uh, perform this um, procedure. Um, you have to extract, of course, hammerhead and then put it on the right position. Luckily, uh, when I glue uh, my set of the hammerheads, I use the lasers. It's a precision tool, especially to put the hammerheads exactly on 5.1 inches. 
And that's why all my henna has already glue on this position. I don't have to measure them again. Why uh, this, uh, we're talking about this dimension? Because the Stanley used this dimension. It looks, uh, I want to show you this original Stanley hammer head number 88. And if I put on my device, you see, and I put my laser beam, you can see they glue it exactly like I do. You see, it's in the center. And uh, uh, if I put my hammer heads, they're going to be on this line. But as you remember, we found a place for our C uh, node that's a slightly shorter, slightly, we have to move it off this line. Why it's happened like this? That's the beauty of the handmade pianos. They not go exactly like on the line. They have their own position. And it's very important to have the proper tool to identify it. Otherwise, you waste a lot of time and you're not accurate in your work. Uh, beside this, you need some tool to extract the hammer head. That's what you can get on a, a regular uh, market. As you see, it's a, uh, you push the hammer head out of the shank by the circular motion. And that's, of course, you can do it, but that's not the proper tool. You got some tools that uh, work with the screw, and it's on a slow motion, you push it out. It's not working either. Uh, on the long term, you make a damage on your shank. And I want to show you this special tool that I designed. It works on a very, very fast impact that's easy to extract your shank. Uh, of course, uh, you probably use uh, some reamers if you need it when you extract the chemicals or just clean the shank. That's a common tools that you probably can get it uh, everywhere and the drill. Uh, you uh, need uh, this tool particular to straight the strings before even all this procedure. That's uh, mostly it. Now, I, uh, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna get to this uh, hammer head with the shank. That's our key, C. We just take our screw and release our shank. You see, it's already shaped, it's already good. You feel that it's ready to go? Unfortunately, no. I, we have to make each one in a high turbo section, adjust them accordingly. That's the perfect point that we can hear the sound improve. Uh, uh, Let uh, me show you how to take uh, this, how it works on this one. You, of course, you see how it's done. You place the hammer head right in this slot and uh, we make uh, like the flat surface round metal piece that we hit it here, right in the shank. And as you see, that's, uh, I made a special hammer. It's from wood. That's why when you hit on the surface, you got a very, very fine impact. And with this impact, you push the shank out without damaging anything like you do it like this. You see, it's already pull, pull it out. Now it's a matter of the slow uh, that you can take the shank out. Of course, you have to clean it and then to put it back on the position. Uh, as we, uh, let's, you can see it's not a big deal to do it. You, you put it in a drill and you can clean it like this. Like that. You see, it's a clean. Uh, and our hammer head now can be re glued again. You see? But where to glue it? If we already know that we glue this hammer head on this position, let's, let's see it. I put it back like this fl uh, flush, like this. And you see that my line goes uh, exactly on this 
uh, in the center of the Shemeshev. But as you remember, over there, I have uh, to put the Shemeshed a little bit shorter. Uh, because what I did, I move it in forward. I move it forward and that create the space a little bit slightly more than 116. Uh, how we transfer it to uh, our jig. And I show you, let's say we got a caliber and we exactly get this dimension. That's the deviation. That's what it is. We put our caliber and just like make this. That's gonna be the deviation. Uh, our jig got the ability to move uh, to move the shank uh, forward and back. For instance, uh, let's say uh, I release it and I show you uh, how it moves it. It's I rotate it and you see I move I move my look here is the gap create the gap and I just match it together exactly what I got on my caliber you see this gap on these flexible sides create when I move it and you see I move it it's exactly on this dimension and as you see the line is moved I have to move my hammer head here. You see, exactly on this position. And uh, I can do it right away and glue it like that. Let me do it. Oh, it works. You see, I lock my, my shank in a proper position like that. You see, just like that. I lock it, pull it out, put a drop of glue. That's gonna be already permanent. And by rotating, everybody knows it to make the glue evenly. And we put it, our line in the center of the hammer head. We make it square to be sure that everything is okay. Yeah. We can, yes, that's it. As you see, uh, it's uh, on a new position. You see, the shank already slightly off. Later on, we grind it, and everything gonna be again yeah, like this to be sure that it's okay. Now we don't need already the beam, and uh, we wait several minutes, and then we install it and put it back, and we uh, experience already that our uh, hammerhead gonna strike at this uh, desired position. That's a basic procedure for every hammerhead. Uh, of course, uh, you can do uh, several guides because um, honestly, it uh, moves slowly. It might create some curve. That's why when you do it for natural keys, uh, uh, the sharp's gonna be automatically between them on this. It's in, and it's a nature of uh, this, um, uh, I mean, physics of this uh, instrument. Of course, uh, for more precision work, you can do uh, each one, uh, each hammerhead, uh, one by one. Yeah, we put our shank with the hammerhead back to our action. And as you see, it's off the line because we follow the Stanway uh, line uh, 5.8. And now you see our C, this one is, uh, a little bit shorter on the shank, as you see, right? Uh, we did it because we found the proper spot for the hammer head. And now we put the action back on the piano and uh, uh, on the side blocks, we will see what's gonna be the sound. Now we put our keyboard back in this piano and it's on the, our side blocks. That's the line that we set up originally, but our C, now it's a shorter, and uh, when we test it, we can hear this, the bro proper sound, the beautiful round sound, but the adjacent sound on the B, you see, it uh, creates some kind of noise, and we try to see the position for our 
B note. Let's see. You see, it's increased noise. Yeah, that's the best sounding. And we can make another line for this hammerhead. Let me do it. Let's see. Let me do it for B. And once I put it back on, the, on our original line, you will see it's going to be similar deviation. It means we have to move the hammerhead almost the same like uh, the C. You see how beautiful this sound now? And this one not, unless we just uh, do the same procedure on a B hammer. And that's how we do it one by one and we find the proper position. Uh, of course, if you follow, uh, uh, do all this uh, uh, section, when we go deeper to the uh, middle section, it's going to be already not affect much. That's why uh, it might be follow this 5.8. But the high treble is critical. And every piano has to be done like this. After you almost finish it, the final thing is just to find this a position and then your stun we gonna be just open just beautiful sound that uh, can create so many beautiful partial sounds and of course power and just like bring it uh, to the performance uh, that's what we want to share with you all this uh, just procedure and all the best and good luck